Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be walking you through the absolute best in-game settings in Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 3. These will include everything from the new settings Epic added, to the most optimal colorblind mode, to yes, even some secret FPS boost tricks to improve your game's performance. So hopefully these tips help you out, I'm going to do my best to include both console and PC players, but either way, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and without further ado, let's get right on into it. Alright, so as I have tried to explain in the past, by the way, this tree, it's just so beautiful. But what we care about, obviously, are the in-game settings. And to actually start off with them, we kind of have to go from performance mode, the best rendering option, but we actually have to switch off to either DX12 or DX11, it does not matter, because on both of those settings, I'm gonna confirm, the two of those rendering mode options, they actually have much more settings that do affect your game on performance mode. I proved that in a previous video. Bro, what is that? Why is the tree so loud? Back to what I was saying though, there are new settings that Epic added that we literally cannot see unless we are on DX11. So for everyone who is going to use performance mode, myself included, you're going to want to start by going to DX11 or DX12 and restart your game. That way you get the full graphics quality options, basically the secret performance mode settings that you no longer see. Because if you do not, you're going to be on performance mode like I am right now. You can see, no grass. But your game is going to feel like crap, it's going to look like crap and you're not gonna have the best settings in Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 3. We are now at Tilted Towers because that other place was just way too freaking loud. Back to the settings though, you can see right now on DX11 and or DX12, you just have so many more options. Like, oh my freaking gosh! All of these settings, or not all of them, the majority of them are basically hidden on performance mode. But like I said before, they actually affect your FPS while you're on performance mode. And for some reason, Epic just decided to hide them and not let you change change them while you're on performance mode. It just, it doesn't make sense. All good though, since you guys watch Papa Jarian, you know how to access these settings by going to DX11, and now we can look at the new ones, which, I mean, there's not a ton. If you look, they're definitely in a new order. And interestingly enough, on the second settings page, the game one, there are new settings, which kind of will affect your FPS. I don't know anymore, man. Epic is weird. But one of the first new settings is the anti-alias they actually changed it to anti-aliasing and super resolution. So if you go and read it, it basically smooths jagged edges and it can stabilize the image under motion. But then the new part is the super resolution, which I guess it does the same thing, but on top of it, it improves your performance by rendering fewer pixels each frame to generate the same resolution output image. Now to most of you guys, that really means nothing. Like you just want to know, do I need fast approximate anti-aliasing? Do I need temporal anti-aliasing? Do I need NVIDIA DLSS? Ugh. The quick and easy answer is that you really do not need any of them. Off is probably your best option. However, if you do like anti-aliasing, the first option, which is essentially like the low one, it used to be just off, then low, then medium, and ultra, or high, I forget. The fast approximate anti-aliasing, I will even apply it. You get pretty good FPS. Like, I know I'm probably not gonna get the greatest, just just because, oh, it's not even uncapped. What are we at? Like 500? Okay, not the worst. And I mean, looking around, I can kind of tell it's a little blurry. That's, that's why I don't like anti-aliasing. But at the same time, that's the whole point of it. It makes stuff that usually has like jagged edges. It makes it a lot smoother. Temporal will drop your FPS a little bit. Like if I look up, I'm getting 450. Yeah, I'm not even reaching 500. Then of course, the last option is one that it used to be all the way down here under the NVIDIA settings. It's NVIDIA DLSS. This by default will give you three options. So you have performance, you have balanced, and you have quality. All of them will drop your 3D res. Like performance is at 50% 3D res. And then I think quality is 66%. It's gonna make your game 
look not only blurrier, but more kind of pixelated and not as sharp. Remember though, with less pixels, you should get better FPS. 500? Oh, yeah, yeah, it hit 500. I just think for anyone who likes anti-aliasing, use the fast approximate anti-aliasing option. It's really not that terrible, and your 3D res will stay at 100%. Me, however, you guys know, I said, turn it off. I don't like the look of it. And yeah, that's basically the new anti-aliasing and super resolution setting. Now we could look at the other new settings, which, like I said before, they are not on this first page with all the other graphic settings. Weird. <coughs> Ugh. I just popped the mini. Where these other new settings are and where they were are on the second game settings tab, which is just the second tab over next to your video settings. And they are actually under, if you scroll all the way down to extra game options. So to begin, we have the report performance stats. This is not new with the new season, but it is new. It has not been in any of my past settings videos. Now I'm pretty sure this was in the game. Oh no, GPU crash debugging is still here. So it is different, but I mean, if you read GPU crash debugging, it says enabling this feature comes at a small performance cost and just like that, report performance stats will do the same exact thing. So please turn this off, make sure it is disabled. Then after that under replays, you guys know I usually say to turn all of them off. I leave them on just because even though it will hurt my FPS, I like having replays on, I like going back and looking, but the added recording in progress indicator went on, it's a red dot and I guess some text will pop up at the right corner telling you the match is being recorded. You really do not want that, especially if you do record replays like me, so turn that off. And after that, just randomly below replays, which I don't, it kind of seems weird in that spot, there's the color configuration and full range test. So color configuration, it is basically how you can calibrate your colors. I'm gonna start it. As you can see, it's basically, I can't move, I can't do anything, there's no HUD, there's no minimap, and it's kind of just a way where you can calibrate the colors on your monitor, you know, as you have the game in front of you, so you don't need anything else. It's not gonna do it for you since that is what the colorblind mode option is for. That's basically the in-game way to do it, not through your monitor, if that makes sense. Hopefully you guys know what I'm saying. But then full range test, this is the full grayscale range calibration, and again, you know, it's gonna do the same thing. I know it seems kind of useless, but if you know what you're doing and you can go on your monitor and actually change the settings. Like, I have an Alienware monitor. I'll just put up a quick video of how you can actually change it. Most monitors should have different options you can select, like different little buttons on them where you can go through, you can change how bright it is, how dark, the different colors, and essentially all the configurations do is they make it look easy, like this is what the game is gonna look like depending on the color configuration. So, I mean, it's there! Hopefully my explanation was not that difficult. Those are the majority of the new settings that Epic added this season, or at least recently. The only other one was something that I believe used to be under the extra game options. It was something called low input mode. I'm actually pretty sure it was right here. I'll put a video on the screen of what it looked like. It was both on console and PC, and I think it was turned on by default for most people. All it did was it helped out with your input delay. Code Life made like five videos on it, including how you could actually enable it by going into your game files. But to answer anyone's questions, Questions. It is no longer in the game. It's not here. You're just stuck with all these other settings, which we'll go and we'll look at now in creative mode because why not? Ah, uh, don't we just love creative mode, especially on DX11? I don't know why seeing grass is just so weird. Not even just in real life, even in game. I can't touch grass because we don't use DX11. For the actual in-game settings, we're gonna leave the graphics, aka the colorblind mode and brightness stuff. We're gonna go into an actual game after this for that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna look at all the graphics quality options as well as the advanced graphics. And guess what we're gonna start with? We're gonna start with the quality preset. Oh, you could not see it, now you can. Quality preset, remember, always turn this onto custom. Did they? Wait, huh? That's so weird. When I go to the quality preset and turn it to low, 
the custom, this thing is gonna disappear. Watch. Boom. Whoa, it just went from five to four. Why would Epic do that? That's so weird. But for quality preset, start it on low, then go and put 3D resolution to 100. Press apply. That will not give the custom option just yet. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to set your view distance to medium, which I actually recommend. I know that a lot of people use low, but there was a good video. I forget the guy's name. Hold on. The guy's name is Slyjack, and he made a really good video where he basically compared all view distances and kind of what he found was that medium is the perfect middle ground where you're not really gonna lose any sort of FPS but what you are gonna gain is you'll be able to see weapons from decently far away all sort of builds and opponents will spawn in at the same time so medium is probably the best view distance I also just use it because if you use high meshes on performance mode that's what I used I don't use mobile builds the only way to get high meshes on mobile builds is to have your view distance on medium Epic's weird, I don't know. But yeah, that's what I use. Onto shadows, obviously have that off. Shadows are useless. Textures you actually can have on medium or high. I will explain kind of why later. But something you do not want to have on or on high is the auto download high resolution textures as well as the high resolution texture reminders. Make sure both of these are off. What this will do is if you have it on, it's gonna download high resolution textures for you automatically. That is gonna destroy your ping it's gonna be really annoying. Then the texture reminders, if you have this off, but then you have the reminders on, it's gonna remind you to turn this back on. So make sure both of them are off because that would also be very annoying. Finally, effects and post-processing, turn these all the way to low, and that's basically all the different graphics quality options. Moving down over to advanced graphics, V-Sync, obviously, turn this off. Motion blur, turn the hell off. Show FPS, obviously, you want to see your FPS, turn this on. Rendering mode, this should also be pretty self-explanatory. Put this on performance mode, that is going to get you by far the best input delay. Allow multi-threaded rendering, most of you guys should turn this on. All it does is it says, for anyone with multi-core processors, it will dramatically improve performance. So just try turning it on, if your FPS is somehow worse, maybe you have like a laptop or a really old PC, then turn it off. But for like 95% of you guys, leave it on. Use GPU crash debugging, like I said before. It will come at a small performance cost. Turn this off. Latency markers also turn off. None of you guys really need it. And finally, Nvidia Reflex Low Latency. Turn this to on plus boost. What this does and why I kind of said before to turn your textures to high if you have a good PC is because with those settings, on plus boost will actually actually make your GPU run at a much higher speed. And what that tries to do is you can see in a GPU bound scenario, which is what happens, Nvidia Reflex Low Latency will actually reduce your input delay, even though you're on higher settings. Like, it sounds weird, but it does actually work. And that is why on performance mode high meshes, I don't use low textures, I instead use high textures. So again, these are the best settings for when you're actually gonna switch back to performance mode. I'll really quickly go to that and show you you guys the final settings we're also going to look at display settings and the graphics quality options after that but just take all of these in and now we can finally go to performance mode Unfortunately, you guys won't be able to tell whether or not I'm on performance mode from the grass because uh, there's no grass on the block, but you should be able to tell by my FPS. <laughs> it's a lot better than DX11 and when we were in game. So as far as the settings go, you can see how just limited they are now on performance mode. Look at this. The page barely goes down. We have no options. All good though, because the only ones that are really different are meshes, which we can't can't even select in-game. I already told you guys I used medium view distance, high textures. I also do use high meshes just because I'm an IGL, you know, I feel like I gotta be able to see stuff and I'm old. Of course, if you want the best input delay, go and use mobile builds. Oh, oh, okay though. Oh, okay. Ah, I wouldn't have missed that edit on mobile builds. I would have been a pure demon. So yeah, I do think low meshes, aka mobile builds, is probably better for like 80 to 90% of you guys. I just like high meshes better, and it's good for content. So that's why I use it, but you guys can change that. Remember, it cannot be changed while you're in-game, so you will have to go back to the lobby. But I mean, outside of that, these are basically your performance mode options. Hopefully nobody skipped to this part, and they were like, oh, these are the only settings I need 
need to know because that is far from the truth. But with those settings out of the way, we can now, I guess, I'll really quickly show the display settings before the graphic and colorblind mode ones. Even though my head blocks it, windowed mode, you obviously always want to be on full screen. The only reason you'd ever be on windowed full screen is if you cheat, and I'm not even joking. So if your friends use windowed full screen, they are most likely cheating. Resolution, I use 1920 by 1080. You can obviously use the stretched res. Go watch this video on your screen if you want to use a stretched res. I'm pretty sure both of the NAE staff and CS winners, like the full duo, Peterbot and Byla, they both use stretched res using my CRU display scaling tutorial. I think they're on like 1750 or 1720, but for content, I use native. A ton of pros use stretched. A ton of them use native. It's preference. And finally, frame rate limit. Just put this one above your monitor's refresh rate. So even though I'm at 240, 360's just way too high. If you're on 144 though, go and put it on 165. If you're on 120, put it at 144. I've said it so many times that hopefully you guys know. And I know there have been some videos. What the? I got a pre-edit. I know that Slyjack guy said to put it on unlimited, but in actual matches, that is not smart. You're gonna be in for some nice surprises endgame of a tournament if you don't cap your FPS. Now for the moment a ton of you have been waiting for. What the? We're at the new side of the map, which it's actually so bright over here. I'm not sure if you guys can tell, but like this whole new area of the map, its colors are just insanely vibrant. The contrast is insane and it's so bright. So obviously we're gonna have to, you know, go into the settings and look at the graphics or the colorblind mode options. Starting with brightness, this is 100% preference. I think this season you can actually turn it down to like 80%. So if I go back and I look, do you guys even notice a difference? Look how bright this still is. And I'm on 80% brightness. Hold on. What happens if I go to 50? Apply. Bro, it is definitely darker, especially over here. But come on. This new area of the map is so freaking bright. I'm on the lowest brightness. So yeah, I use 100%. Anything from 100 to 80% is fine. You definitely don't want to go above that. User interface contrast, that is only for your settings, so it does not change anything else. I just use the default of 1x. Colorblind mode though, if you guys remember last season, colorblind modes did not work on performance mode. The only thing it would change were like your weapon colors. But now they finally fix colorblind modes and if I go to Deuteronope 10 and then I look around, look! They finally changed everything! The sky is dark blue, the greens are darker, even the tree looks different. Let me show off Tritonope 10 because uh, if you guys thought it was bright before, oh my lordy lord. Look at the blues. Tridenope 10 is insane. Not for me. In chapter 3, season 3, in my personal opinion, I think that Tridenope is just not really an option. The only two good colorblind modes would be either Protonope, anything from Protonope 5 to Protonope 10. This is what Protonope 10 looks like, and I think it looks pretty cool. Obviously, the light blue is a lot, like, greener. But myself, I use no color colorblind mode. I think that's what the majority of pros use this season. Just colorblind mode off. The game is already like so contrasted and stuff that just changing the colors even more. I don't personally like it. Oh, and I actually just remembered to prove how bright the game is. Look at the builds on this side of the map. It doesn't even matter if I go to, like, Deuteronope 10. Look, I, it's- I feel like it's even brighter! <laughs> Again, though, that is why I use no colorblind mode. It should be pretty easy to see in Storm. I feel like that's not really a problem anymore. I feel like it might even be harder on DX11 and DX12 now, considering how, like, just bright and insanely colorful everything is. Oh, oh, hell no. Get the hell out of there. So, uh, yeah, guys, those are basically the best Fortnite settings in Chapter 3, Season 3. Let me know down below how all of your FPS is after this video. If your frames are really that bad, let me know and I will make a dedicated FPS boost guide with all my tricks, PC optimizations, everything you could think of. Otherwise, drop a like, subscribe, and that's it. Later.